So good evening, everyone. My name's uh, Andy Bellamy. I'm the chair of the BCS South Wales branch, and we have our monthly webinar for, for January. We're joined by Holly Lidbury from the Cyber First Wales project. And this evening, Holly will be telling us all about uh, the success of the project so far over the last year that uh, we've been running it in Wales. And we'll be talking about the Ambassador Network, which we're hoping any industry partners uh, or anyone who's got any um, any interest in the project uh, to, to get involved. So there'll be an opportunity to ask Holly some questions. If you wanted to uh, ask questions at the end by popping on your mic, you absolutely can. Otherwise, feel free to drop any questions in the chat and um, we, we can always uh, interrupt Holly um, as we're going. So I'll hand over to now to Holly. Uh, Holly, over to you. Thanks, Andy. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, as Andy said, I'm Holly. I, I uh, lead on the delivery of the Cyber First project in Wales. Um, so I'm just going to act as if everybody here doesn't have any knowledge about the Cyber First project. If if that's okay, apologies if. Um, you know, you're familiar with it and you know the background, but I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page before we started. Um, so the Cyber First project is basically the, the education and outreach arm for the National Cybersecurity Centre. Um, I think it, it was first established sort of 2015, 2016 time um, in uh, response to the skill shortages that we're, we're experiencing in the cybersecurity industry in the UK at the moment. Um, and it it started as more of a kind of top end skills initiative. So it began as um, a bursary program and a degree apprenticeship program, trying to get more um, students in higher education going into the, the cybersecurity industry. Very quickly, they realized that they they needed to expand that to more of a sort of schools and FE outreach, um, basically because they, they weren't getting enough demand for the, the bursary and the degree apprenticeship program uh, in general. But also they were realizing that there was just not enough diversity within the pool of, of candidates applying for those bursary and degree apprenticeship places. Um, there is a big focus on diversity within within this whole program um, and I always say you know it's it's kind of with the cybersecurity industry it's you know not that it ever is but we're not doing this for its, its own sake to come up with the most secure solutions to things we have to kind of think comprehensively from all different angles so it's, in, it's imperative and it's very much a focus of um, the education outreach program. So yeah, it quickly progressed from the bursary and the degree apprenticeship into schools and colleges outreach. Um, so you might have come across things like the girls competition, which is uh, for year eight girls, trying to get them interested before they take their GCSE options. Um, it's very successful in increasing the uptake of computing GCSEs amongst girls. Um, and it's just really fun competition in general. They've got multiple um, courses which range from sort of half day for younger students through to uh, week long residential trips for, for older students that start dealing with more industry standard security um, topics. Um, these are all fully funded as well um, to create sort of equity and access to those initiatives. Um, they also collaborate a lot with um, D6, uh, so you might have come across platforms like Cyber Explorers. It's all kind of like this, um, this umbrella of activities which are all aimed at increasing sort of awareness of, of online safety for, for one that kind of gets um, comes through uh, drip fed everything. Um, but mostly it's about increasing that interest in technology, increasing understanding of, of how technology works and therefore, and you know, the vulnerabilities, how we can secure it um, and trying uh, with all of these initiatives to convert students to, to specific pathways. Um, so why uh, this relates to, to Wales and how it's different in Wales, um, basically about if I just go to my next slide, um, probably come up to two years ago now, uh, the NCSE uh, decided to start um, 
uh, bringing on partners to de deliver the Cyber First programme regionally and nationally in some cases. Um, basically, they wanted to scale up. They, you know, were having a huge impact and they just wanted to make sure that they were doing it in the best way possible within different areas um, and able to, to scale up more effectively. So there are quite a few different partners now. Um, there's Cyberverse in Southwest, Northwest, Northeast. Um, we've got a Northern Ireland one, a Scotland one, and of course a Wales one with um, more areas looking to be onboarded in uh, the next uh, year or so. So, you know, something to say from the start is, you know, obviously this is BCS South Wales. So, um, you know, this, this is probably, you know, people here who are interested in opportunities in Wales anyway. But if you do work for an organisation that has involvement elsewhere in the UK, um, there are other cyber first projects that you can get involved with. And they, they all operate slightly differently. So I'm going to tell you about the Wales setup. Um, we, uh, we lead on this as the University of South Wales. So my employment with uh, USW, um, we at USW are um, an ACSC, so we're an Academic Centre of Excellence in Cybersecurity ed Education, um, awarded by the NCSC. So we've got kind of a, a long history of working with them uh, on this sort of thing, and specifically cyber outreach with schools and colleges. Um, so they decided to subcontract to us. Uh, our expertise um, and connections are largely within Southeast Wales. So we've partnered with Swansea University and Bangor University to deliver this. This is a pan Wales project. Um, although, you know, a, a lot of our current cyber first schools and colleges, a lot of the schools that we currently work with are concentrated in Southeast Wales. We are, you know, going through a lot of um, effort at the moment to try and make this more of a pan Wales thing. Um, to be more inclusive of the Welsh language, especially. So we've got hopefully our first Welsh language schools coming on board soon as well. Um, so again, if you know anybody outside of South Wales who you think would be interested, um, then please get in touch. Um, and yeah, just something around the logistics. So I lead on the project, but we have area leads within each of the regions as well. So, um, you know, if you come across uh, Joe, Lois or Kate, they just kind of manage a different area. Is somebody about to ask a question? I can hear. No? Um, right, so essentially what we're trying to do through the project is uh, develop a diverse pipeline of talent into the cyber industry in Wales. So it's exactly the same as the kind of objective of Cyber First from the beginning. But obviously for us, it's specifically in Wales. We're trying to address skills shortages, but through the project, we we want to support the ecosystem development as well. So it's not just about our outreach to schools and colleges. It's about getting people like yourselves, stakeholders within the cyber ecosystem, interested and involved in, in this piece of work so that it's more sustainable, it's more embedded, um, and really so that we kind of have more expert knowledge in how we can achieve this. Um, we work specifically with secondary and FE, but within Wales, we're very conscious that we align with other initiatives that, that fit into this. Um, so you'll see in this slide that we have um, strategic support from an organization called National Digital Exploitation Center or the NDEC. So if you haven't heard of that before, um, it's basically, it's a joint project between USW, TALIS and Welsh Government. Um, they've created a cyber centre of excellence in the, in the Welsh Valleys, but they've got a primary school outreach arm as well. Um, the CyberFirst project, like I said, is primarily secondary and FE, and it's, it's based on um, influencing subject choices and pathways. But, you know, this is an education project and education best practice is if you want to raise aspirations and you really want to be impactful um, in terms of changing student uh, trajectories, you really need to do that before the age of, of 11. Um, so we work very closely with the NDEC project. We also work very closely with Technocamp. So I don't know if you know, you've 
we've probably heard the techno camps before and um, they're very well established have a really long history of um stem education support in in wales funded by the welsh government um, and eu funding previously um and they they work with secretary and further education but also primary as well so everything we do we try and fit into um that primary level outreach uh so that we're we're working with best practice as well and we're we're trying to work with the secondary school primary feeders and really especially in uh, areas of deprivation where it's, it's very important to get that early to raise aspirations um, we work very closely with them uh, we also have a really close working relationship with careers wales um, we we align with their business engagement advisors um, getting industry into school um, and we then kind of think about how we fit in uh, higher up as well. So we've got a working relationship with the Cyber Innovation Hub, which you might have heard of, um, which is now providing sort of retraining pathways, teacher upskilling. Um, and of course, we work with all of the NCSC's ACE CSC universities. Um, so currently USW, Cardiff and uh, Swansea have just come, come on board as an ACSC in Wales as well. But we do work with all of the universities across Wales through our, our partnerships. Um, so, you know, we do lead on this in USW. Obviously, there's kind of the, the recruitment agenda. We want we want students coming to us. We want to be working with industry. But the Cyber First project is very much about collaborative working, not about directing students to sort of one pathway, but to the pathway that suits them the best, whether that's uh, vocational. You know, we also work with the Cyber College Cymru Initiative, which offers a sort of industry sponsored BTEC pathway at, at college level. Um, uh, or maybe they want to go down academic routes. It's very important for us to be developing that ecosystem, you know, understanding the skills landscape within Wales. If there are any companies that um, have a security contingent in Wales, we want to know about them. We want to work with them. We want to understand their needs um, and we want them to influence what we're doing so that we can really kind of use this to, to join the dots in the whole ecosystem. Um, so I've briefly mentioned the the initiatives that are part of the Cyber First umbrella at the start. Um, so I mentioned the girls competition, the courses, the bursary, the degree apprenticeship, um, and NCSC also offers some teacher training centrally. But the big thing uh, that we're responsible for, the thing that we're kind of KPI'd on, um, and the thing that helps us to drive this forward is something called the Cyber First Schools and Colleges Award. Um, so you may have come across one of these schools before. We've currently got 16 um, across the whole of Wales, schools and colleges who have this award. They're awarded at bronze, silver or gold level. Um, and it's basically a stamp of approval from the NCSC, which says that they have an excellent approach to computing and cyber education. So those schools who get what we're trying to do, you know, currently this isn't... Um, you know, driven in the curriculum as much as potentially we would like it to be. Um, you know, it's very difficult to get subject specialist computing teachers. Uh, was difficult to get teachers in general, but computing specialists uh, or STEM teachers especially. Um, so, you know, we don't have that kind of the, the importance that potentially needs to be placed on computing within the curriculum in order to help. Uh, look at the look at addressing the skills shortages is is not in place. So what we're trying to do is reward the schools that are doing that, that are going above and beyond, that you know are employing computing subject specialist teachers or upskilling those that aren't, um, who are applying the appropriate amount of time to computing within the curriculum, who are actually doing computing uh, as opposed to IT within the curriculum and understanding the, the difference and the significance of that difference, um, who, who see that, you know, this is important for the future of their pupils because, you know, close to 100% of them will be working with technology in the future and everybody in the world has to have a basic understanding of, of online safety as well. Um, so it's, it's rewarding those schools that are on board with that. Um, it's a very small percentage at the moment, 
but what we're hoping and actually what we're seeing already um, is that because these schools are getting the award with the NCSE stamp of approval, um, more schools are starting to kind of say, I would like a piece of that. And that, that gives us the leverage that we need then to work with them to help them improve their computing and cyber education offering so that they can then get an, an award too. Um, so this is kind of the, the bread and butter of our project. It's trying to get schools to apply to become cyber first schools and colleges to work towards that. Um, and to really just come on board to our mission and, and see that this is something that, that they should be prioritising within the educational environment. Um, you know, rather depressingly, it's, it's quite hard sometimes. You know, I've worked with some schools, uh, you know, great teachers who are really enthusiastic, who, who want to move this forward. But, you know, their head teacher is putting their computing lessons on a rotating termly conveyor belt so the students only get uh computing lessons for one term per year um you know and that will just be it topics as opposed to more you know broad computing uh topics so you know it's it's um it's a steep uh mountain that we're looking to climb um but we're hoping you know the more schools we convert to this um just the more the more leverage we have to kind of say to other head teachers you know if, if you want this you've got to put the effort in you've, you've got to take it seriously um so we run that project ourselves the the team of five um like i said before um but obviously our our goal is to increase the amount of schools and colleges that are doing this and we we give them an, a lot of support compared to the other regions and um, we're, we're very hands-on uh, with our schools and colleges. Um, we don't just kind of do flash in the pan activities with them. We do strategic activities um, with every single year of the secondary and FE cohort year on year so that we're slowly kind of having this marginal gain effect where more students are competing. Uh, convert into the computing pathway so it's it's very labor intensive for us um so we have come up with a model that helps us or you know should help us to scale that as we as we go along um there are three ways that you can support this you know i i'm really you know just overwhelmed by how much support there is within the cyber community in in wales you know uk wide all the other cyber first uh, program see this but um you know just everybody wants to support um everybody wants to help the growth of this this ecosystem um everybody's passionate about getting more students interested in these pathways um so for us it's about providing the the model the framework and the support to facilitate that in an impactful way um because you know despite all the goodwill in the world it's not your day jobs to know what works in schools. It's not your day jobs to know how to get in touch with schools, communicate with schools. Like schools seem to work and operate in an entirely different language sometimes. So, um, you know, we we want to create a model which kind of marries that that um, the effort that people want to put in and the impact that they can have. Um, so there are three ways that that uh, individuals or organizations can get involved. The first is by becoming a cyber first industry partner to uh, one of our schools or colleges who have the award. Um, and this is a very specifically laid out model of engagement. So we have the Cyber First Wales engagement framework and a, a company that wants to become an industry partner to a school or college they um, they sign up to provide five days of support per year to that school or college. That's five days per organization. So not five days per person. If you've got five members of your team, you're given one day each. Um, and it is a framework. We are very specific. I'll kind of go into more detail about what it entails after this. Um, but we know what works. That's that's our expertise. You know, that's our, our area of expertise. We know what works. We know when to do it. We know who to do it with to have that impact, to start converting students to those pathways. Um, 
so we take the guesswork away we take the prep work away and we say what we really need is role models people who live and breathe this industry um who can help inspire those students and we need your time to be able to scale this up so we're really using you for your time and expertise um not expecting you to do any more legwork than that we manage all the admin as well so we do all the calendar invites and the diary management you know organizing meetings providing actions and updates etc um so it really is five days of your time and you know then up front what uh, what resources needed for the academic year so it's you know I think a lot of our industry partners appreciate that because we're not kind of going every now and again can you do this can you do that they can actually put it into their uh, resource planning for the year ahead um the the other thing that comes with this so if you if you want to work with a school as an industry partner as a prerequisite your organization has to sign up as an NCSE industry member um, so some of you might work for companies that are already NCSE industry members you might have heard of this before um, but ba basically this works as kind of a points-based system where the more you do with cyber first um the more access you have to graduate talent so the bursary program that i spoke about the degree apprenticeship program currently on hold but, but will be come back in the future um you you basically get access to these students so these are the the creme de la creme of uh cyber students across the uk they um you know they're, they're doing degrees but they're also being trained up by the ncsc you can offer them uh, fully funded by the way uh, work placements over the summer you can do year in industry with them um, or you can recruit them if you know you're you're looking for that early recruitment support um, but yeah if you sign up as an industry member to to become a, a partner to one of our schools or colleges not only do you get kind of like the um, you know the, the long-term recruitment benefits are long, really long-term that we're doing, but you get the sort of more immediate recruitment benefits for your, your early um, talent pipelines. Uh, second option, if your organization doesn't want to get involved with this, if the organization doesn't have capacity to, but you are, you know, a very keen individual, you can sign up as an individual as a cyber first ambassador. Um, so our ambassador network works network works slightly different in Wales, um, and you, the simplest way to explain that is that it's a lot less effort than elsewhere in the UK. So the the other cyber first area models, their ambassadors do most of the stuff that our industry partners do. So because we've got the industry partnership model it frees up our ambassador network to be fully voluntary completely ad hoc um you know you sign up as an ambassador and you're really being an ambassador in its true sense which is about promotion we want people who can help us to echo the cyber first message across wales um who can help us you know on that mission of getting into more schools getting more ambassadors and industry partners interested we just we really want you to kind of um you know i, I keep joking about like it's it's like a cyber first cult like we want people who are really passionate about our message who want to get it out um and you know that you can you can do that in different ways um i'll go into more details after this but it can be very low stakes to posting some stuff on social media to supporting us with events if you want to um if you opt to sign up as an ambassador you can just you know tell us no sorry i can't do it at the moment got too much on or sorry i don't fancy it at the moment and that's fine um the third way uh which i just want to make people aware of as well if you do work for an organization that's interested in in um less kind of time given and more just sort of financial support uh, we are looking to step up our sponsorship opportunities at the moment um, and we've got opportunities at project level so you can actually we're, we're looking um, in our next year of delivery to actually open up 
to people joining the project board and supporting us with the strategic direction of the project. Um, but we also have individual event sponsorship opportunities, which I'll, I'll fly through at the end as well. Um, so industry partnership in a little bit more detail. So this is the engagement framework as it stands. Um, although I will say, you know, we are very much a project. We run like a project and we feed lessons learned into uh, everything that we do. So every year, this engagement framework gets updated based on feedback that we get from the schools, the colleges, and the industry partners. So if you opt to do this, you know, it's not static. If you don't like something, it, it can be changed. Um, so first thing, it's, it's about developing this ongoing relationship with the school or college, you know, I talked about sustainability, um, scalability. Ideally, what we want is that once this has run between a school or college and an industry partner for a few years, we can move move away from that partnership a bit more and it will become self-sustaining. Um, you'll kind of have the insight in the relationship with the school to keep it going. And then we're just there as a support mechanism. At the start, we're very heavily involved. So you'll see here, um, year seven, we've got transition activity, uh, which is about introducing the new cohort of students. The fact that they're in a side first school, make a bit of a big deal about it. Um, we also do some uh, sort of uh, don't cross the line into cyber crime messaging during that session as well, which is surprisingly important even for 11 year olds. Um, We've got a taster session for the girls competition in year eight. Um, you know, all of these things where you would go into the school, we go in with you the first time. We can go in with you the second time. We can go in with you the third time if you want. Um, we'll deliver it the first time. We kind of like, you know, like training wheels. We'll remove the training wheels as you gain confidence but we provide the resources. So that transition activity, the girls competition taster, for example, you don't have to come up with anything. We know what works, tried, tested, we've improved it year on year. Um, we give you the lesson plans, we give you training how to deliver it and we help you deliver it as many times as you need us to. So it's not scary. Um, well, it's always a little bit scary going into schools, but... Um, We've got also so um, things where you can feed into them. So the girls cyber activity for year seven, we've got a cyber event for girls in year 10, which is to address the kind of leaky pipeline effect that we see where girls take computer science GCSE, but then don't want to stick with the A-level because when they get there, um, they're a bit lonely. Uh, we've got curriculum support at uh, year 10 as well. So that's very much a conversation between the industry partner and the school about how they can enrich the curriculum uh, to make students see uh, the kind of real life uh, relevancy of, of what they're learning. I think, I don't know if any of you are familiar with um, computer science curriculum, but it's a little bit dry. Um, so this is really, you know, maybe the, they're learning about um, different attacks and somebody could come in who maybe works on some sort of operational technology and can talk about how an attack would impact um, sort of a real life scenario. It just makes it a bit more dramatic if, say, a power plant is being hacked into and they can see, you know, there's that risk to life um, rather than them sitting in a class thinking about kind of a the standard IT network. Um, it's it's just about kind of getting them a bit more uh, interested in uh, security topics. We've also got a big event for years 11 to 13. Uh, we ran our first version of this on December the 15th, just before Christmas. Um, and it was, it was a real success. Actually, we've got uh, a lot of good feedback about this. Um, the whole event was aligned to Cybok. So all of our industry partners and some of our ambassadors who wanted to support, they delivered activities aligned to the different uh, knowledge areas within, within Cybok. So all those students who were in that event, they were interested in cyber and it was about saying, right, 
what actually is cyber what are the different paths like sort of areas that you could go into um what are you actually interested in are you interested in system security you're interested in digital forensics are you actually interested in cyber law um they got to taste have a taster of all those different things um and then what you'll see here as well is the the activities that aren't in blue so cyber explorers girls competition trailblazers adventurers and then um sorry defenders and advanced defenders futures and advanced they wrap around so the industry partner doesn't deliver this but it's just to illustrate that this is you know this is a whole piece of work it's not flash in the pan it's not we're gonna put you in front of you know a group of 200 year 10 students and three of them are going to be interested in what you have to say and you're going to spend a whole day in the school it's you're going to go for in for an hour um we're going to be really efficient with what we do you're going to only deliver to the peoples that this is relevant to there's going to be a specific objective um you know whether that's converting them to sign up to the girls competition or converting them to do a computing gcse um or teaching them about online safety um there's going to be a very specific objective so we're using your time as efficiently as possible and it fits into this kind of whole journey that the students go through where like i said we're trying to pick up a few more students along the way um for people who are interested in the industry partnership model we work very closely with careers wales on this as well because i do understand that in my efforts to be as efficient as possible we kind of miss the the more holistic piece which is you know some students will get to year 10 11 12 13 having never been interested in technology and then they'll be like oh that sounds quite interesting and and this framework it doesn't really allow for that so through the careers wales partnership um we ask the industry partners to also be open to doing a few things with uh, careers wales uh, throughout the year that can have a bit more of a holistic approach so perhaps looking at um a larger cohort of the older students um trying to change their mind and and that kind of thing um so yeah it's five days per year an openness to opportunities with careers wales um and that's it really uh, that is the, the industry partnership. There is also an option for colleges. So some people are, you know, very bought into the kind of longer term aspect of, of this. You're not going to see these people applying for jobs in, in your organisation immediately. Um, and they're willing to work with schools, but some people do, do want to work uh, with older students. So we've got a college engagement framework as well. Um, and that focuses more on trying to convert students in their feeder secondaries to go on to their computing pathways. So you have more students coming out of FE to kind of pick from, I guess. Um, so just to give you a, an idea of who we're currently working with, um, there's, a, there's a huge variety in this as well. So we have got, you know, big organisations like Talis, Airbus, um, PwC working with us that have a lot of capacity and what we found is that actually those companies once they're used to it they they want to work with an additional school so Talis is working with two schools um, Airbus is about to start with a, a second school now but we also find that the engagement framework means that even sort of SMEs can get involved with this so we've got companies like It's Us Consulting um pure cyber you know a bit smaller um because like i said they they know the amount of work they're committing to up front it's they've, they've still got the ability to engage um and then you know this isn't just cyber companies um is any company that has a security contingent a company that's also invested in getting more students going into computing pathways um, so Indigo Telecom we're in discussion with at the moment. Um, so you know, Telecom's uh, company obviously have a huge security contingent. Uh, Wales and West Utilities. And we've got you know government organisations like the IPO. Um, you've got the ICO looking to come on board with a new school uh, in our next award round as well. So you know um, I know there's going to be variety in the sort of organisations people are, are working uh, for. 
Um, if you do go back and, and speak to your employer or your decision maker and you're interested, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're a big company, a small company, um, a public sector organization, a private sector organization, we can we can make it work. And we want to. Uh, so, yeah, just a, a summary, as I was saying to Andy before this, like 50 percent of my job is basically sales now, which I'm really uncomfortable with. <laughs> Um, but I do find that this kind of, it sells itself, you know, um, it's free to engage. Uh, so we're not, we're not asking for any money for you to become an industry partner. You get that promotional value out of it. You know, you're recognized by the NCSC. Um, you get access to all the industry member perks, so the conferences, the awards, etc. cetera. Um, we're building up kind of a, um, a, collection of case studies best practice now as well welsh government are one of our our project board members one of our major stakeholders so you know your your name does get recognized at that level um you also by default become a valued partner of the school through careers wales um so if you do three engagements with a school um you're a school what that school's valued partner according to careers wales so it's like another little badge of honor um but also, of course, you know, a lot of companies do this because of this sort of corporate social value targets, KPIs. We understand that we want to facilitate it for you in a way that's, that's impactful. Um, you know, if you want to look at the, the wider benefits, um, it's it's long term, but it is about increasing the size and diversity of the cyber computing cohorts in Wales, um, hopefully making recruitment easier in the long run, um, raising the profile of the industry, developing the, the ecosystem. Um, but then, like I said, you do get that more immediate recruitment benefit um, through the NCSE industry membership. Um, you are you do have access to students at FE level as well, if, if you kind of recruit um, from that pool too. Um, but obviously that general promotion raises awareness of you as an employer within this industry within Wales as well. Um, so yeah, just some nice pictures to show you what we've been up to. Um, so like I said, we've had our Cyber Pathways event. So, you know, uh, one of our industry partners, Pure Cyber took part. Um, you know, we do lots of promotion on social media of, of all of the um, support from our industry partners. Um, and we're really, you know, making quite a big, big difference to these students. Um, lots of things that you can get involved with. We've had CTFs at events before. Um, you know, the support for the events could range from sort of panel discussions through to delivering activities. Um, so, you know, there's an awful lot to get involved with. So secondly is the ambassador network. So like I said, this is um, a lot uh, lower stakes than the industry partnership model. And if you're here interested as an individual, this might be more for you. Um, so what you can do as an ambassador, uh, you can help us promote Cyber First initiatives to local schools and colleges. So the, the first thing to really say about the ambassador network and the model we use, um, because as I'm sure you've ascertained, <laughs> I like things to be very ordered. Um, our ambassadors, they own a specific locality. So rather than, you know, previously what, what would happen with the Cypress project is you just, you'd be an ambassador for the project um, and then you'd be asked to go to any school. And it was just, nobody had a specific remit. There was a lot of overlap, and a lot of inefficiency. Um, so now every ambassador that comes on board, they're associated with a specific locality. So you could be, um, you know, an ambassador for Newport, an ambassador for Anglesey. Uh, Andy, for example, is one of our new ambassadors for the Vale of Glamorgan. And he works with two other ambassadors in the Vale of Glamorgan. So we've got three in Vale. And then each ambassador actually owns the relationship with the handful of schools. So four or five schools within that area and what that means is you know if we're asking you to promote things if you want to help support activities 
you only do it within those specific schools. So you've got your, your own remit that's manageable. You know that you're not duplicating efforts. And it just helps with that relationship building, which we've really found helps with the sustainability of, of the project. Um, so, for example, if the girls competition is, is coming up, um, we would say to our ambassadors, we'd love if you could help us promote the girls competition in your schools. Um, you know, you would potentially get in touch with your schools and say girls competition is coming up. Please do it. You could put it on social media. Um, you know, some of our ambassadors even opt to deliver taster sessions for the competition themselves if they want to, you know, go um, get a bit more into it and they've got capacity to. Um, yeah it's it's really for you to decide how you want to do that because this is the added value for us the industry partnership and our activities take care of, of what we need to do so this is just really about amplifying it as much as possible and you know we're happy with any support we can get from you uh so promotion to schools and colleges promotion uh, of industry partnerships to cyber businesses so you know if you're networking with people if you have conversation with somebody and they say oh I'd really like to do some schools outreach you can mention cyber first to them um, if you find an individual who wants to get involved you could suggest they become an ambassador and that sort of thing it just helps to echo that message um, and you don't have to do these things actively as well. That's another reason why we assign people to localities is we're trying to leverage the existing relationships. A lot of our ambassadors, they have kids that go to a, a certain school or they have friends who are teachers. They might be a governor. You know, there's lots of reasons why people can have connections with different schools. And we just want to make use of those connections. So, you know, it could be speaking to someone in school playground. It could be bumping into someone in Tesco's doesn't have to be that you're putting a lot of effort into this we just want that kind of drip fed um, promotion uh, you can support delivery of activities and events in those local schools if you want so if careers wales have an opportunity to do um to get involved in a careers fair at one of your schools and you're available and you want to great if you're not not an issue we're not going to tell you off um the one thing that we really, really beg our ambassadors for support with is the assessment of the, the school and college award applications. Um, so there are usually two application rounds per year and each one requires two days of support. Uh, so if you want to help with both, that would be four days of your time per year. If you want to help with one, that would be two days of your time per year. If you really can't, you're having a really, really bad year. Um, you don't have to. We're not again, we're not going to fire you. Um, this is voluntary. But this is the one thing that we're really like, please, please help us with, because obviously we can't do it ourselves because it needs to be impartial. Um, it's quite an easy process is marking criteria you don't have to have any marking experience and also we find that our assessors actually kind of in, enjoy getting to understand what we're marking these schools on what we're looking for um and you know understanding kind of what the where we're setting the bar for computing and cyber excellence um but yes again i repeat this is all on a completely voluntary ad hoc basis you're not free, you can't do it, something comes up, not an issue, we're not going to hold you to account for it. Um, it's really just about connecting all these people who are interested in, in what we're trying to achieve um, and applying a, a model to try and, you know, get some, some more traction. So yeah, Ambassador Network, um, we do promote you as well. Uh, so you'll get a nice little announcement on social media if you want. If you don't want, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, you know, obviously you're doing this as an individual, but it, it is nice um, for your organisation to get that kind of promotional benefit as well. Um, and, you know, you'll see here we've got lots of different sorts of ambassadors. So Eigen uh, works for Cisco, obviously comes from industry. Dwayne works for North Wales Police, so public sector uh, Lisa, she works the NDEC project, so educational outreach. And then uh, Jonathan is uh, actually currently a student at Cardiff University doing uh, his PhD. So, you know, universities as well, academia. Um, we really just want a mix so that we're, like I said, 
getting into all parts of the ecosystem. Um, and just some examples of the sorts of stuff our ambassadors do. So um, this was our conference. So you'll get an invite to our conference. So you can kind of start uh, learning a bit more about the skills and education landscape within cyber in Wales too, and uh, contributing to, to that as well. Um, we've got Sarah, one of our ambassadors for Swansea here, delivering a, a girls competition taster session with, with Jo, who's our West Wales area lead. So she's opted to do um, that actual delivery as well. She was free. Um, we've got Shinny here from Cardiff Met and Chami. Um, they're both ambassadors from Cardiff Met and they supported our Cyber Pathways event. Um, so obviously there's benefit there for them as well uh, as a university being able to promote themselves to students who are interested in cyber. Um, so yeah, you'll, we'll find that some of our ambassadors are able to do it within their professional capacity as well because it supports their, their organization. Um, and then we've got, you know, over here, Joe Wells, who's one of our ambassadors, who um, we call our cyber first influencer because he constantly posts about us on uh, social media and he has a great following. So, you know, there's, there's that side of the spectrum as well. It's, it's just about that visibility, helping more people to understand what we're doing and get more people involved. Um, so, yeah, like I said, you know, this model, it's really about um, just trying to structure things to make them impactful, manageable, measurable, shareable and scalable. Um, we want this project to be sustainable. So we need all of these things to happen. We don't want anyone's time to be wasted. We all, you know, we're looking to achieve the same thing for, for you know, for different reasons. Um, but we understand that, you know, when the, 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 there's a problem for industry, um, but it's difficult to understand how to translate it into the education landscape. Um, and, and that's where we want to come in. That's our area of expertise. We understand the educational landscape. Um, we understand the links uh, with the industry. Um, and we just want to be the, the mechanism for, for joining the two together and making sure that what we're doing uh, is, is really having uh, the desired effect. So lastly, just to, to run through this, um, like I said, we, we do have sponsorship opportunities coming up. Um, so if you know anybody or you are somebody who would be willing to contribute financially to project, that would be great. Um, obviously we're fully funded by the NCSC, but the more money we get, the more we can do. So we can put on extra events, we can get more schools involved. Um, we can create greater access to our initiatives because we can support sort of funding for transport and things like that, which is a big stumbling block for schools. Um, we also, uh, you know, some of the, the cyber first areas across the UK have been really successful with this. So, um, the Northwest, for example, they've got map, complete match funding for their project uh, from, from industry. Obviously, Manchester, they've got a lot of big companies with their headquarters there. So it's, it's a little bit different, but we are trying to emulate that in, in Wales because we're seeing how much of an impact it's having in places like the Northwest. So there are sponsorship opportunities at project level. So you effectively buy into the project board and you become a partner, a delivery partner of the project, um, not through delivering with re your resource, with the resource will make it happen. It's providing uh, financial support to help with delivery. Um, you can also kind of dictate within reason uh, what those funds can be used for. So if you've got sort of uh, corporate social value targets, KPIs, objectives that you want to meet, we can direct funds at certain activities. Um, but yeah, depending on sort of the, the level of the project that you would want to buy into, you would be promoted as a project partner or supporter. So like our current partners. You can also sponsor individual events. Uh, so if there's, you know, something specific that you're particularly interested in, so like our year 10 girls event 
or our pathways event or um, the girls competition celebration event for example you could say we like to sponsor this specifically um, you could be a headline sponsor um, you can provide things in kind as well so we have organizations who've um, for example donated the use of a CTF platform uh, you can sponsor specific elements so travel lunch merch whatever uh, or anything else that helps you to uh, meet your kind of uh, CSR uh, goals as well we can we can discuss that um, and this is the the most immediate opportunity um, and actually I'd be really grateful you know if anybody here knows anyone who would be interested in supporting us with this um, you know please please do put them in touch with me we are we're due to host a celebration event for the girls competition on the 22nd of february in the icc in newport um so this event is for the the top 10 teams from the cyber first girls competition this year we did incredibly well with the girls competition um we increased the number of schools participating this year by 150 percent so before when the ncsc were, were running it to um, when we came on board and took over promotion of, of the competition, uh, we massively increased the number of schools participating. I think we had 65 in total uh, in the end, which is, is huge. Um, we really want to build upon this next year. Um, we want to kind of raise the profile of the competition so we get even more schools participating. Um, I have to say the the girls competition is my favorite part of the whole cyber first project just because i know how impactful it is you know we've had some schools who've run it one year and then the next year they've had uh, there was one school that had 66 percent girls in their computer science gcse class which is just incredible it really is effective in showing them that you know computing is for them open to them not what they thought it was um yeah so i love it and i just we really want to to kind of build upon the good work that we've done this year by getting more schools involved um so yeah we part of that is to put on this celebration event we're actually partnering with um the women in cyber wales conference so claire johnson from um women in cyber wales has decided to put on a conference uh, in February, it's the first one that they're running. So if you haven't seen that yet and you're interested in going, um, please Google tickets. I think they're selling on Eventbrite at the moment because it looks like it's going to be a great day. Um, but yes, the, we're collaborating with them so that the girls from those top 10 teams across Wales, they will attend the last part of the Women in Cyber Wales conference. They are then competing in a capture the flag activity, which has been kindly donated by uh, Palo Alto. And then they're attending a uh, drink reception, non-alcoholic, obviously, um, and they'll have a three course awards dinner. So we have a headline sponsor now. So the Cyber Innovation Hub and Admiral are kindly sponsoring this. Um, but we are still looking for uh, sponsors for the, the actual tables for the awards dinner. Um, so this is for eight people. Four of those will be the girls from the competition team. They'll have a teacher or a guardian making up the fifth place. There'll be a Cyber First or NCSC stakeholder. And then you'll have two spaces on the table. So um, you're, you're really, you know, your money goes towards obviously the girls attending. But obviously you get the two spaces too. Um, you also get two free tickets to the conference as, as part of that package. Um, and all the kind of promotional benefits that come with it. Um, so we're very active on on social media and uh, we'll be promoting you up to the event, during the event, as part of the conference as well. So we associated with um, the Women's Cyber Wales Conference too and, and mentioned during the day's activities. So yes, um, just need to put that out there. If anyone's interested, please do get in touch. Um, and yeah, that is the end i think if anyone's got any questions i'm happy to to answer um please feel free to to drop me an email and also please follow us on social media big plug at the end um 
yeah, we're very active, put lots of updates on there. Um, we're on X, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Although um, less active on the latter two. I've got a question in the chat from Valine. Mm -hmm. uh, Valine's asked for... I'm assuming this is for ambassadors, uh, but it could be about industry. Does promotion involve in-person visits to schools or is it virtual? Uh, also, by schools, does this include the universities and colleges, which I think you went on to, to talk about after the question was posted? Yes. So um, I'll answer the last question first. So it includes colleges, but not universities. So we don't do outreach to universities, but we do work with with universities you know we've got people from um fac the cyber faculties lots of different unis uh who are ambassadors industry partners etc um so the promotion can be any way you want we're in the process actually of developing an ambassador welcoming pack to give you tips on how to connect with the schools um it could be that you cold call them it could be that you know somebody there and you speak to them. It could be that you drop them an email and see if anybody picks it up. Um, if we already have a link with the school, which is the case a lot of the time, or we can find a link with the school through, say, Careers Wales or something, um, it, it, you can go in. And so the girls competition, for example, is, is a good one because a lot of our ambassadors ended up doing actual in-person uh, taster sessions. You don't have to do that. You could do it virtually if you wanted. Um, but yeah, like I said, all of the ambassador stuff, it's added value for us. So if if you want to go in, great if you can get in great because the other thing is it might be that you've got four schools assigned to you and none of them are responsive which is annoying but it's, it's life it just it, it does happen you know we do get kind of um just you know brick walls with some of the schools uh so yeah it's it's really up to you but we will help you like you wouldn't be on your own in doing anything anything um Again, we can come in and deliver stuff with you if you did want to deliver. Um, we just kind of like train people up and then see how it goes. But, oh, caveat to that, um, as as part of sign up as an ambassador, we do put you through the STEM ambassador onboarding process. So you get a free DBS uh, through that as well, just um, to cover that safeguards and angle. Thanks. Got another question here that's asking, how do we go about registering? So we've got your email address on the screen. Is that the best way to get in touch with you uh, if you wanted to become a, an ambassador? Yes, please. Yeah. Drop us an email. Um, happy to, you know, have another discussion with you. Um, and yeah, but just email. We don't have kind of a application form or anything at the moment. Maybe one day when we're inundated. Um, another good question here. If somebody was living in London, can they still become an ambassador for Cyber First Wales? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I don't see why not. If you've got, you know, connections with a specific area, then, yeah, we would like to make use of that. Um, I think, obviously, if if there is no connection with with the area, then it's, it'd probably be a bit more difficult um but yeah it doesn't matter if you're you're living away but yeah not impossible yeah um another good question here how can the cyber first wales program have an impact towards children in schools from ethnic minority groups uh, by using sort of cyber security initiatives to promote inclusivity and diversity in society yeah that's a really good question actually because it's something that you know obviously our our team we're we're all women so the gender diversity um kind of strand comes very easily to us we you know we have personal experience we know what works um you know what we're we are trying to do is make sure we're inclusive in the ambassadors and the industry partners that we recruit so when we're putting on events uh, when we're doing engagements you know students see people see role models um 
in in those engagements and activities we know that role modeling works and you know there's a lot of, of evidence to back that up um so that's kind of our first port of call um but what i would say is you know like i said with the engagement framework we're really really keen to develop that to improve upon it year on year so as we get more um, ambassadors and industry partners who have particular expertise or interest in that area we are discussing with them you know how we can make it more inclusive as we go along can we add in additional engagements specific events specific interventions um yeah and you know do, doing what we can we, we are uh 18 months into to the project um so you know we've done sort of our first full year of activities and over the summer we're really going to kind of take stock and look to improve so yeah we actively encourage um people with a specific interest or expertise in that area to to support us and we'll we'll listen to that feedback that's great uh, another question. Uh, this is the last one in the chat at the moment, if if that's all right for time. Oh, another one's popped in as well. OK. Um, can I ask whether there's a psychological dimension to being a good security practitioner? And if so, when is the aptitude tested? Is it in schools? So is, is there a psychological dimension to being a good security practitioner that you're aware of? Um, I mean not not me personally no it's probably not my area of expertise I mean I can speak anecdotally from you know students that we we work with um especially you know the ones that we see doing well in in things like the competitions and the uh, courses and I, I think it comes down a lot to resilience and thinking outside the box um so a lot of the the students who do well in in these things they um they don't give up when the first answer is wrong which is actually kind of counterintuitive to how they're taught in schools we're very much taught like specific methodologies for working things out there's only one way to come to the the right answer um and it's the, the students who can think outside of that that do particularly well in it you know i, I find a lot of of students they'll have a go at something and they'll go oh no like that didn't work and then they lose interest but the ones that will kind of try different methods so I, th I think it's it's the resilience but obviously that is what I'm witnessing at, at school level not within industry <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't you know really know it'd be interesting to find out though wouldn't it to do, do a whole research piece as to uh, whether there's certainly uh, sort of certain or certain personality traits with with young uh, learners that we yeah. should progress in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be really uh, interesting. Another question, this one's about the Welsh language, actually. So you briefly mentioned that you're also trying to expand into Welsh language schools. Mm -hmm. uh, do you plan to have Welsh language ambassador or partner days? Um, can you briefly sort of mention a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so um, one of our team members, Lois, who's the area lead for North Wales, she is uh, a Welsh speaking member of our team. Um, we so first of all, you know, everything that we do is translated. Our social media presence, our emails, we can we can do everything in the Welsh language. Um, we've got four schools. Uh, yeah for Welsh language schools applying in this application round. So we're currently in an assessment period at the moment. Um, so pending their applications go okay, we should have a couple of Welsh language schools um, coming through at the end of January, start of February. We have uh, Welsh speaking ambassadors and we actively recruit Welsh speaking ambassadors so that we can provide our services in Welsh language schools as well in Welsh um that's really important you know all our materials are translated for engagements as well so if you are a welsh speaker and you want to deliver a girls competition taster in welsh the materials are there they're ready they're translated you can do that we actively encourage it um we haven't got any specific welsh language events in the calendar yet but that's definitely something i'd like to look at 
Fantastic. So if you are interested in the Welsh language speaker and want to become an ambassador, then you, you absolutely need to be getting in touch with them. Um, with Holly, yeah. That's it from the questions in the chat. Is there anyone else that wants to fire off a last minute question? Um, I think we've probably got time for one more, Holly. Yeah, I'm happy to stay. No, okay. In that case, um, can I just say a, a massive thank you for, for joining us this evening. Uh, thank you from all the BCS South Wales membership uh, and from myself and the rest of our committee. Uh, it's a fantastic project. I'm really looking forward to getting involved as an ambassador as well. Um, uh, originally from Barriers, so getting back to my old schools will be nice and seeing if any of the old teachers are still there. So thank you very much, Holly, for, for joining us tonight. I just wanted to say a, a few words as well from the BCS. Um, before we go tonight, thank you to everyone who joined us to watch the live stream. Thank you again. Huge thank you to Holly for their fabulous talk. Um, I, I hope some of you are already considering reaching out to, to find out more about becoming either an industry partner or a Cyber First ambassador. Uh, those of you who are new to our BCS webinars, uh, I'm Andy Bellamy. I'm the current chair of the South Wales branch. Uh, we are the Chartered Institute for IT in the UK, better known as the British Computer Society or BCS. We have over 70,000 members in over 150 countries. Uh, we're a community of business leaders, educators, practitioners, policy makers, uh, all committed to our global mission of making IT good for society. Uh, our South Wales branch normally has a uh, monthly live webinar and non-members can register for free, join the live stream and can also watch the webinar back on our BCS South Wales YouTube channel. Uh, this video will go up in a, in a couple of weeks once it's been edited and you should be able to find it through that. You'll also, if you've registered for the event tonight, which obviously you have, you'll get an email saying that the uh, video is there for you to watch back. Uh, if you'd like to know more about what our volunteer committee gets up to, maybe you'd like to get involved, maybe you're interested in becoming a member, not sure what the benefits of that would be, then uh, please follow one of our socials. You'll find us on LinkedIn. Uh, you can search for South Wales, BCS South Wales, uh, or you can email us via our South Wales branch page. Again, just search for South Wales BCS on your browser and you should find us. So thanks again to everyone for watching. Uh, hopefully see you at our next webinar. Um, good night. Thanks everyone.